everyone, so today we are doing a very exciting video. In this video, we are going to be doing another pottery ceramic video. <laughs> I am so excited. I am so enthused that you guys wanted to see this video because I did a pottery video a couple weeks ago where I used my new wheel. And I asked you in that video, would you like to see me do another pottery video with no wheel so that if you want to try at home and you don't have a wheel or a kiln, you can still do it. So that is what we're going to be tackling in this video. Now I don't have a kiln, but I do have a wheel and I've made a few pieces on the wheel, but I've also made a lot of pottery without the wheel and I think it's super fun, even though I'm still very much a beginner, so we're going to be learning together. I feel like I have a few little like experience points, little pieces that I can share a bit of my knowledge with you guys in case you're a beginner too. We can learn together. I also had a few like pottery experts give me some advice on my last video. So thank you so much for that uh, advice. It's very helpful. And I was reading through all the comments and like taking notes. So hopefully I can put some of that expertise to the test today. Now the pieces that I'm going to be trying to make today are heavily inspired by the ceramic shop that I saw on my Instagram. Uh, feed like it just popped up I think because I searched lots of ceramics this one was suggested to me and oh my goodness I fell in love with these mugs so here is the ceramic shop that I saw as handmade small batch ceramics now the pieces that I saw that I like fell in love with were these mugs down here like these were the ones that were on my feed so adorable now these ones are actually made with a kiln i guess here are the pictures of them going into the kiln you guys know i absolutely love handmade pieces that look handmade and i feel like these mugs are very that you can almost see like the bumpy fingerprints in these mugs which i just think is so adorable all of the little handles are different sizes and i love the design the only difference for me is as you can see the painting isn't very opaque whereas i use acrylic paint and then i glaze over top because i don't have a kiln so i actually think that i'm going to prefer that but the what i'm making is like heavily heavily inspired by these mugs but yeah so this is the account that i got the inspiration from these are super super cute and i hope uh they don't mind that i'm taking inspiration from them so yes i'm very excited to get started on this video and see what we can create i absolutely love making pottery so if you guys want to keep seeing videos make sure to let me know down below and let's get into trying to make these cute pastel adorable handmade mugs Let's go. Okay, firstly, I just put my hair back and now I would probably suggest putting on something over your nice shirt. I feel like every time I've gotten clay on something, it's washed out well, but it is a bit of a hassle. But okay, I never learned, so I'm just gonna wear my shirt. <laughs> so I have everything I'm gonna use off to the side. First, I have a little bit of clay and then I have all of my tools. I have like this big belt of tools. You don't need like nearly this many, for sure not. And like even household items like forks, knives that sort of thing would work just fine but these are kind of like more specialty and i think they do make it a little bit easier and then i have a little bowl of water and just a little bit of paper towel just in case i make some mistakes or spill so first things first i'm gonna get my clay out now my parents were using my pottery wheel the other week so i don't know how much clay is left but hopefully they left enough all right so i'm gonna cut just a chunk of pottery for my base. I feel like I'll need a little bit more than that. Is that enough to make a cup? Probably not. I mean, that might be enough to make an espresso mug, but that's not what I'm going for. First, I'm just going to knead it like I knead this dough. This just helps, I guess, get the bubbles out and also make the clay more workable, so I don't like to skip this step. How are you guys doing? Having a good day? Let me know down below. How's your day going? My day's going good. My tulips just started opening, so I'm very happy about that. That's it. That's all for me. Okay, I think I've got that pretty well kneaded, so I'm going to allot a little bit of clay for the handle. And now I'm going to start making this, uh, this mug, which I honestly have not decided 100% how I'm gonna do this, so this might be a bit of trial and error. So I'm just gonna start by flattening it out. The beautiful thing about this mug is it doesn't have to be perfect. Like it's not a mug you would buy in a store normally. And that's kind of what I love about it. 
I love the little fingerprints and everything. Now I don't want any part of it too thick. That's been my most recent problem, is anytime I make something, it'll be like 10 times as heavy as a normal jewelry dish. So I really need to work on that. I'm gonna try to work to just get the general size and then I'll start evening it out a little bit more. Right now it's not looking quite right. Hello, it's Mia, voiceover style, to explain what I'm doing because honestly, it just looks like a mess. Um, the way I showed you guys how to do it is not a professional way to do it. I'm just basically flattening out and then curving in the edges and taking out pieces. My mom actually came in while I was doing this and she was like, why aren't you doing it the way you coil it, like a snake? Apparently that's an easier way. I did try that for one of the other ones and it was a lot easier. But if you don't want to use a technique, this is kind of like a technique-less way to do it, is what I'm showing. Okay, then it was time to build the handle. I just rolled out some clay, cut it to the desired size. That was pretty easy. Applying it to the mug is the important part. You gotta scratch the clay and then stick it on there. That does like a second layer of adhesion. And then just basically blend the clay together so it looks like one piece. All right, you guys, I think that this is pretty good. I actually really, really like how it turned out. I have a few spots, like little dents and things like that, but honestly, I've been trying to work them out and he's decided that he would just like to stay. No matter what I do, he wants to stay. So he can, I'll allow it. So as you can see, there is a lot of texture on here, which I really, really like. It's kind of the difference between the wheel and without a wheel, because I feel like with the wheel, it gets very, very smooth, but without you get all of these little like grooves and things from your fingers, but I really like it. I tried to smooth it out as much as I could while also having that sort of like textured thing that I like. So. I don't know, I'm just hopeful that this doesn't fall off. One really important thing when attaching a handle is like secure it and then secure it again. And then right when you think it's secure, secure it one more time. Because like these like to just like, as they're drying, just like fall off. Fingers are crossed for that, but I'm gonna make two more of these off camera and then I'll let them dry overnight and we will paint. Okay, you guys, I just set up my camera and I realized that my face is like not even in it. Like not even a little bit. Hello? Hello there? Okay, but anyways, it is the next day and these are pretty well dried. I'm a little concerned about him, so I'll just paint him last because like these ones are definitely ready. I don't know why, maybe he's just thicker, not really sure, but I'm going to do some painting and interestingly enough, I was on Instagram last night. And all of a sudden, because Instagram is always listening to me, I got a lot of ceramics on my feed and a lot of ceramics that looked very similar to what I'm trying to create, but from different stores. So now I'm like, who made this design first? I mean, it's just a mug, so I don't know if there's any like claiming the design, I'm not sure. But this is another artist called, I think, Tuca Ceramics. Handmade, unique ceramic pieces, and they are the same vibe like they are the little one with the little round handle with all these cute little pieces on there. So if you guys know who made this design first, let me know, but I think that a lot of people create kind of similar stuff, so I'm just another one. I'm trying to figure out what design I wanna do. I know I wanna do like a cloud one, a flower one, and then like a fruit of sorts, so I think I'll do all the base painting and then get more specific about it. I don't know though, this is the pressure. This is usually where it blows up in my face, like this is usually when I ruin it, so. 
good try not to. I'm gonna start off by painting the one that I'm most sure about and that is the cloud design. Now, which one do I want? Maybe this one over here. Now I want this blue to be very, very light and pastel. So I'm gonna mix in lots of white with this. Oh, and oh my goodness, I almost forgot. I use acrylic paint. Now, most people who do pottery use like glazing paint and then they'll throw it in a kiln and it will look beautiful. For me, I use acrylic paint and then I put a finishing like gloss hardening, kind of like a top coat finishing layer, which is kind of similar to glaze, but not really the exact same. I feel like it's probably not as like um, strong, but it's pretty good. And it's really good for if like you don't have a kiln, it's a good substitute. It gets kind of like the same look. I want the blue to be dark enough that the white clouds will pop enough on it, but I want it to be light enough that it is what I'm imagining in my brain. Now I'm just going to paint all of the base colors on. I wanted to go with like really light pastel colors just to give like a really airy vibe. Okay, I have all the base colors on. I'm still waiting to flip this one, but now I have to like really come to terms with what I'm gonna do because like I can't procrastinate any longer. I just like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, I think this one might be cute with like flowers. This one strawberries and this one clouds. I think that sounds good. And this one's ready for the bottom. <laughs> I'm procrastinating. I like how I always do tutorials on like things that I really have no idea how to do. Like as if I could be the teacher. No, I couldn't. All right, cloud time. Let's see. Okay, that's pretty cute. That's pretty cute actually. Okay, hold on. First cloud, done. What do we think? Do we like it? I think it's cute. Okay, now I'm mixing up the color for the strawberries. I wanna do something like kind of cute, like a cute strawberry color. Painting all these little details was a lot of fun, but it was actually really time consuming, but I think it paid off in the long run. I really love the way this strawberry mug turned out. And these flowers are actually my least favorite design, but they took the longest. So I don't know what that means. Okay, I got all three mugs painted. Now I'm just gonna let it dry and then we're gonna glaze them up. Oh my goodness, I just forgot. I have to put I have to put leaves on the strawberry one. Okay, and then I'm gonna let them dry. Just a minute. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes. I think all of the paint is dry, so now I can dive into this thi triple thick 
Brilliant Brush On Gloss Glaze. Now, this is what I've used in my last pottery video and just all pottery that I've made, I've glazed it with this. I really, really like it. I feel like it finishes it off super, super well. So I can link this down below if you guys are interested because I've seen lots of people comment about like, what glaze is this? And I get you, here it is. I don't know if it's the best glaze. It's the only one I've tried, but I do really like it. So I'm just going to apply a nice thick coat to all the pots, or the mugs I mean, and then I'm going to leave them for like a couple hours and then I'll flip them over and do the bottoms. You can apply this with really any brush, just make sure to wash it really well afterwards, otherwise it will harden like to the point of no return. So yeah, just be careful of that. Okay, what I'm about to say is super, super important. So if you've been fast forwarding, that's totally fine, but just stop for one second and listen to me. The acrylic paint I'm using is not food safe and neither is this gloss, I don't think anyways. It doesn't say anywhere on there that it is food safe, so I would not trust it. Now, I know historically mugs are for drinking things out of, but these are decorative mugs. Unless you have food safe gloss and paint, I would not suggest actually drinking any liquids out of here. They're just for show. Unless of course you use something that is food safe, then that would be different. Okay, so these are all glazed now. I'm going to leave them for quite a few hours and then I'll flip them once they're a little bit dry and I'll do the bottoms and then they should be finished. I really, really like them. I think they're so cute. I don't know which one's my favorite yet, but maybe it will become clear once they are dry. We will see. All right, guys, it's a day later. The mugs are completely dry and the finished product is complete. I don't know if I just had low expectations for myself, but I am like floored in a good way. Are people floored in a bad way? Like do people just get floored mad? Or are you only like floored with excitement? I'm floored with happiness. I don't know if that makes sense. I have this picture that I saved off Instagram and it's this kitchen with a bunch of mugs hanging. And that is like something that I would like to do so badly in the kitchen. And I feel like these three mugs would be a good start for the collection of hanging mugs. I'm still kind of nervous to like hold them by the handle, but they're good, like they're secure. But I just don't trust it. I don't know why, I probably should, but I don't. But okay, so we have the blue cloud mug, the pink strawberry mug, and the light orange flower mug. Comment down below which one is your favorite. And also, I am so curious to know if you guys are going to try some at-home pottery without a wheel or a kiln. It's super, super easy, trust me. If I can do it, you can do it better. I know I always say that, but honestly, it's the truth of it. Like seriously, if I can do it, you can 100% but anyways I really hope you guys enjoyed this video I thought it was so much fun to share some tips and techniques on pottery and like you don't need a kiln you don't need a wheel to make pottery all you need honestly is like clay of any sort and you can make something really really cool and I mean I love these pieces they're so unique and like so handmade I just love handmade things so yeah I really hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope it inspired you to try and make something I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!